the Center for Advanced Transportation Technology Laboratory. Um, I'm going to be talking about a tool that we developed um, that is being used in the field by uh, Maryland uh, State Highways Administration, uh, their specific motor carrier division, uh, and Maryland State Police's Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Division uh, to help keep the uh, freight in their region under control. Um, so. So why do they need to do this? Uh, what's the problem with freight? Um, so uh, trucks are heavy, um, and our infrastructure is only capable of handling so much. Um, we need to protect our bridges and off-ramps from overly heavy vehicles uh, damaging them, and we need to protect those vehicles from themselves. Um, each vehicle is only ready to carry so much, though uh, if you pack it in, you can get a lot more in there a lot of times, and that can put strain on the axle, cause the brakes to not work as expected. Um, if you're going over a bridge and you uh, off-balance uh, the load somewhat, it's easy to topple, and that would just ruin everyone's day. Um, so the way we deal with this uh, in, in policy is we make sure that um, every vehicle is rated for the appropriate amount of weight it can carry, and we license the drivers so that they're approved to operate that vehicle and make sure that the companies that are going to use those vehicles uh, are also properly certified. The problem is freight is a business and if you can, you know, if you run a, a milk uh, truck uh, company and, you know, it's, it's just a big cylinder on the back, just by looking at it you can't tell if you're, you know, a few hundred pounds overweight or not, but um, if you're going to get into an accident that, that's going to make a big difference. Um, so you hope that um, something bad doesn't happen, and you run heavy, and um, you hope you can get away with it and, and make a little extra money by delivering more. Um, so we have way stations out there, physical uh, uh, parking facilities, the scales, uh, and we have little signs on the highway that tell people, hey, way station active, you need to pull over if you're a truck and get way to verify that you're, you're, doing, uh, you're doing right by us. Um, the problem is, they're, they're physical facilities, and you can only build them in so many different locations, and it's very easy to, to oftentimes find routes around them. So, uh, this map actually shows the location of two in Maryland. Um, that's Baltimore up in the top right, you can see down the bottom left. We've got the uh, way station down there at the uh, 495 interchange, and one up on, on 29. If you're coming out of Baltimore, you can just take 95 south. Cut over on 32 and take 29 the rest of the way down to the beltway, and you bypass the need to stop at the way station. Um, we can't exactly, um, you know, very quickly deploy a new uh, facility. We can't knock out a couple acres of land on, on 32 um, to uh, work around the freight companies that have figured out how to do this. But what we can do is deploy a virtual way station there. And the way these virtual stations work is it's, it's way in motion. So it's a set of detectors that are on the roadway uh, and a camera. When a vehicle crosses the detector, it is uh, weighed um, based on the timing of when the vehicle is crossing the edges of the sensor. It's able to detect the uh, weight and classification of the vehicle, how the uh, weight is distributed across the axles. And if it's a, uh, a freight, uh, the camera will go off and an image will be snapped. Uh, we kind of just ignore the passenger vehicles because they're not uh, so important for uh, Maryland State Police in this particular project. Compared to the process of actually uh, paving over some forest, this is actually a much cheaper and relatively quicker um, process to, to set up. Uh, so the truck continues off down the road after being waved and flagged, and unfortunately for him, there's a police officer sitting a uh, quarter mile downstream with an application on his phone or a uh, website on his computer that the uh, <coughs> University of Maryland has developed. It's updated in real time, and uh, he can decide if uh, the readings coming off of that sensor to his laptop are uh, high enough that he wants to actually flag this guy down and take him to the physical way station and uh, force him to you know, offload some of his, his, uh, his cargo. And, uh, and find them as appropriate. Uh, so I'm going to switch over and do a demo of the application that uh, Maryland State Police has available to them in, in their uh, vehicles. And there's also 
this uh, website also works on the, on the mobile devices as well. Um, so they have the option of choosing whether or not they want to use their laptop or their you know, iPad or, or phone. So this is a uh, part of RITUS. So after they log in, those Maryland State Police officers will see a link for the uh, virtual way station application. Here's a list of the different locations where there are virtuals deployed. Um, the US 301 uh, Bay Bridge location was actually destroyed recently um, by a construction crew who didn't realize it was there. We had a talk about that earlier in the session about how that could be avoided in the future, but they're currently repairing that. Uh, so I can pull up uh, one of these. I've got one uh, here. This is Maryland 32. Um, we are looking at a vehicle that crossed the uh, station here. Uh, aspect ratio is a little funny. Uh, let's see if I can hide this. Give it a little more space. There we go. Um, so it looks like it kind of dodged the camera a little bit there, but um, we're looking at a vehicle that went by at uh, 1.54 uh, local time there. Um, it's a class six, it's a dump truck. Um, the front is off balance, that's what the magenta there indicates. Um, the back wheels are heavy. Uh, the size of the circle there represents how much of the load uh, on that particular set of, of uh, axles is distributed. So it looks like all the the weight, um, and it can kind of tell by the image too, is kind of distributed towards the back. Um, but other than the fact that this vehicle is off balance, uh, there is uh, there's no other uh, flag thrown. Uh, let's see what else we got here. That's another off balance. Ah, here we go. This this truck is running heavy. You've got the the red uh, there indicating which axles are overweight. The uh, bright red represents the fact that uh, that particular axle is. Uh, completely overweight. Um, it is, it is uh, beyond uh, the legal limits and the, the lighter red indicates that that is uh, getting high but not, not over that threshold yet. This updates in, in real time. Um, I've got a filter set so that I'm only looking at uh, violations. Um, so just the guys who are in trouble, I can remove that filter. And I can also remove my filter on class 2 vehicles. So this is the, the passenger cars. They don't get uh, their pictures snapped as well. Uh, but we can see them streaming by and we get the, uh, the way station information there as well. Uh, so they'll, they'll use this device on their phone. They'll uh, lock to the vehicle that they want to flag down. And they'll go over to the, uh, the driver after they flag them. And, and they'll have a little discussion. Uh, so it's not just um, stuff that happens on the side of the road, though, that they're concerned about. Um, they're, they, Maryland State Police also wants to identify repeat offenders. Um, so they needed a tool that would allow them to look at trends in how uh, people are uh, kind of abusing the roadway system. Uh, so we put together this little uh, analytics tool here that uh, on the left side gives them the ability to specify uh, what it is they want to search by, um, so I can choose the date range I'm interested in. I've already done this uh, search. I've prepared the results here. Which of the stations I want to look at, I've gone and selected all of them. Uh, which vehicle classes. So typically class nines, uh, 9 and up are the ones they're concerned with. And these are all of the flags that the virtual way stations uh, pick up. So I can uh, say, you know, maybe I don't care if uh, someone is uh, trying to uh, cheat at the way station by uh, slamming on their brakes at the last second, that's what that speed change flag is, um, or if they're following too close to the vehicle behind them. But I've gone ahead and just pulled in everything. I'm looking at uh, one of the many visualizations that's available here. I've got view of account by date and hour. So I've got hour of day along the top, and each day in the time period I searched along uh, the vertical. So I can mouse over any one of those and see just how many vehicles there were that came within that uh, hour time band. And we can see where the uh, distribution of the vehicles is. It looks like at this particular station, uh, we expect to see the most vehicles of the type that I've filtered there uh, coming by uh, during the, the evening hours. Let's see um, what, just looking at the uh, class nines that are overweight gets us. While that runs, I'm going to switch over and look at a couple of the other visualizations that uh, are available in this tool. So
So, uh, on this list, one of the, uh, the options is a table uh, with vehicles with nested axle details. Um, this is kind of a prescribed report that uh, Maryland State Police told us that they were already uh, uh, told they needed to provide to their superiors, um, that they're basically doing by hand. Um, and so we wanted to give them a way to, to quickly do this uh, with the data that they uh, were providing to us through the virtual way station. So it's, uh, it's not too complicated. We list the uh, vehicle identification number, so that's basically a random number assigned to a vehicle by uh, the way station, the time that the vehicle crossed the sensor, vehicle class, number of axles, and the weight distribution across the axles. Uh, any part of the vehicle's identifying information that uh, triggers a violation is colored in red. So you can very quickly, uh, if you've got um, the vehicle in mind, find out exactly uh, what might have been uh, might have been up with it. It's, uh, you can click on any one of them and it'll pull up the details. This one was one that went by at night, so our color uh, isn't really working there too well. It's just it's black and white. Um, we've got the, the image there, and we see the wheel, the particular axle that is um, overweight that looks like everything's kind of shifted towards the front of the trailer for this particular, uh, in this particular case. <coughs> Here. All right, so this is finished. So I've just filtered out class nines that are overweight. So if I were uh, a state police officer uh, looking to uh, target this uh, location, uh, it would tell me that um, contrary to the previous query I ran where everything was kind of uh, cluttered in the uh, PM peak, it looks like the middle of the day is actually the best time to catch uh, class nine vehicles that are uh, abusing this section of road. Um, there are a number of other visualizations in here. Um, this one um, is kind of fun. It's a time spiral. Um, so we've got the uh, first day in the date range um, in the center, and the uh, outermost ring represents the last date, and it's kind of a 24 hour clock. Uh, so each little uh, colored uh, widget on there represents a vehicle going by the station that matches the flags that I've set on the, on the left. Um, uh, Maryland State Police um, has admitted that this visualization is not particularly useful to them. Um, it, it works with other data sets, um, but not really so much with point in time. Um, but they said it's kind of cool for coolness sake. Um, and when I recommended removing it, they said, no, no, you should just keep that. We'll play with it. Um, so they have that available to them. And they have a number of um, kind of bar charts that allow them to uh, go in and uh, get um, kind of more categorical data. Um, so we can see how that works. Clicking on any one of the, it'll come back in a moment, resulting bars. I've just filtered class nine, so that, that makes sense. Let's undo that. Um, clicking on any one of the bars that comes up will bring up a list of the vehicles that match that, that filter. So it will be a particular uh, hour of day and day of week, a um, particular number of uh, classes that I've selected, a particular number of flags, and I get all of the uh, vehicles that match that. So I can see the profile of all of these. These are basically my, my top offenders for the, the date range I've selected. I will click on um, any one of these links to get the, the detailed picture. And uh, there's actually a uh, pre-populated field notice. This is something that uh, Maryland State Police uh, wanted to put together so they could just print out this little letter, stick it in the mailbox, and send it out to the company that is running this truck. And in um, kind of not so subtle language, I don't think, uh, indicate to uh, the carrier that they need to uh, make some changes. So it basically says, this is not a traffic citation but you're basically breaking the law, so you need to contact us so we can, uh, we can check out what's going on with your vehicles. Um, so they're using uh, that um, pretty actively. Um, the tickets that they uh, collect for these things uh, run in the thousands of dollars a lot of times, so the virtual way stations actually pay themselves very quickly. Um, they have uh, six deployed right now, and they are looking to uh, triple that um, by the end of next year. So I promised during my lightning round 
that I would give some more stories. And I'm not going to spend too long on this, because I have a flight that is sooner than I realized. Um, but uh, Maryland had uh, five of these stations deployed initially, and a few months later they uh, started uh, one on I-83, which is north of Baltimore going into Pennsylvania. So people were uh, figuring out that um, there was some kind of technology that was on the road that was, that was measuring them um, on, the, on the routes where the virtuals had been deployed for a few months um, because they were getting pulled over shortly after. So they started trying to you know, pick out what they looked like, try and spot the camera. Uh, and during uh, uh, one of these, uh, the, the construction process on I-83, someone must have recognized the camera that they were installing um, as one of the ones from the other locations because when they opened it up on, um, on the day that they uh, activated the site, they had someone within the first two hours um, decide they did not want to go through the virtual probably because they were running heavy and didn't want to get caught. So they took the exit before the station, uh, wound up in a residential neighborhood. This, this is a tractor trailer. Uh, should absolutely not have been there. Um, couldn't take the, the curves um, of the residential streets properly. Ran aground in the mud in a police officer's front yard. <laughs> and so he had to help him get out of, of his front yard um, and then take them for so much more than he would have um, if he had just run the, the virtual way station overweight. And I also promised I would talk about watermelon buses. Um, this is a creation of um, Delaware. It's kind of a more agricultural state than Maryland, um, at least the, uh, uh, compared to some of the larger cities, uh, a lot more farming <coughs> land. Um, so what they do um, in Delaware on the farms is to ship their, their produce, they will take decommissioned school buses, shave the top off them, uh, as you see here, so they can get expanded capacity, I guess, um, and they'll, they'll drive them um, throughout the state and into other states. Delaware's cool with this, because um, it's kind of their economy, it's what they do. Um, Maryland, not so much. When police officers started seeing these things on the roadway in their states, uh, in Maryland, the, uh, the first reaction was, I think that's breaking a few laws, but I'm not exactly sure which ones. <laughs> so, um, they basically uh, tried to, uh, in the words of, of the police officer I was speaking to, love these things to death. Um, so they couldn't just outright ban them, but they decided they would make them get special permits to run like this, and they just made them pretty much impossible for uh, these buses to pass the inspections that would allow them to get permits. It's dangerous running these things over the Bay Bridge because you hit a bump, one of those watermelons is going to fly, and you do not want that on the Bay Bridge. So, um, over, the, over the years uh, where they've been denying people permits for watermelon buses, uh, they've actually had to grant someone one. They had to uh, relent. Uh, the bus actually passed adequately through the inspection process. However, uh, using the virtual way stations, um, they noticed that there was uh, there were multiple uh, watermelon buses running by these stations per day. So clearly, uh, there were people who were uh, taking advantage of the fact that they'd uh, they knew that there was a license for a watermelon bus around there, but not necessarily for theirs. Um, so that's actually something Maryland State Police are currently dealing with, trying to track down who is um, taking advantage of this. So it explains the price of watermelon in Maryland, I guess. Uh, looking forward to some of the things that um, we're looking forward to doing with them. Um, Maryland uh, State Highway Administration is currently evaluating license plate reader vendors. So uh, we'll be getting data off of the virtual way stations that indicate who actually owns each truck that's going by so we can very easily identify uh, repeat offenders. And as I mentioned, um, by the end of next year, they're looking to triple the amount of installs that they have. Um, and uh, that is all I have. Does anyone have any questions? <coughs> yes? Uh, I know class 15 is, is uh, unclassified vehicles. What do they use class 14 for? Um, I'm not exactly familiar with the vehicle classes. Um, and it, yeah, class 15 is an error code in their yeah. system. Um, so 15. 14 has usually is a special type of custom mm -hmm. vehicle. I don't, I don't know if it's a watermelon bus, but yeah. <laughs> maybe. But also, I wanted to add, buses are extremely heavy. You, you showed the class nine, the axle weights are like 20 tips. The articulated buses <laughs> coming out of the factory, we're seeing them at 30 tips plus. Mm -hmm. Just 
actually a quick question. Um, did you have any problems getting uh, data from the vendor feeding the, the, the feed to you for that? Or how did that work for you? Um, just just technical hurdles in, in getting everything working. But did they let you? Yeah, as far as um, uh, Maryland State Highway facilitated it. They, okay. they make sure the vendor right. is willing and able to provide it to other people before they sign on with the vendor. Who's the vendor? It's uh, Cardinal. Cardinal Way Station, I think is the name of the country. So this is being used for compliance and enforcement, but only after that particular uh, property carrier is interdicted by a patrol officer, who then kind of replicates the process by taking them to an official way station. Uh, they'll they'll uh, send out those pre-populated field notices just to anyone that they see. Which is kind of a warning. Yeah, so they I mean, won't necessarily warning, have a... It doesn't enter into their litmus or whatever their record. No, no. It's, <coughs> it's a courtesy, they call it. A courtesy, I like that. The, the second thing is that a watermelon uh, vehicle would be officially, I think, a passenger uh, carry. Passing forward. Because it was originally <laughs> uh, constructed for that purpose. Yeah. And the FMVSS, uh, which NHTSA has responsibility for, would still apply. So that technically, any and all of those vehicles are... Passengers? Are, have, <laughs> have, so yes, they have to be, I think, enforced or inspected according to their original configuration. Mm -hmm. Is that... You know, the I, I can I think see that, that, that is the, all the records there are going in those class fours are just as a bus, right? So yeah, it's a bus, and mm -hmm. it's still it, it, whenever seats are taken out or any of that, that's a violation of the FMVSS because it's a, mod, a modification. Hmm. So the virtual way station is a great way. I mean, you can catch every single one of them. I like watermelon so much as well. We what, should convert our bus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Michael, the expansion plans, uh, do you know if that's going to include Interstate 70 and 81? Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly which locations they, they've targeted. I would, I'd say with the number that they're deploying it, it's probably likely. Now the, uh, the State Highway Administration has decided now that they they like us handling their way station, their virtual way station data, so they're now starting to push us all of their regular way station data as well. And there's some other analytics we'll probably be adding into that at some point. These are all uh, loop PSO way stations, the weight sensors of the PSO? Yes. Yes. And they have. No, they have no bending plates, no. Not that I'm aware of, and they, I know they have a special truck. That they run over them fairly regularly to calibrate them. From what you've shown us, what what's the split between the vendor and the university? Who's who's done what with this this technology? Um, the vendor actually um, put together kind of a rudimentary version of the analytics that we have. Is that table that I showed um, was something the vendor had originally done and they want us to include. Um, but um, as far as what they're uh, what Maryland State Police is using now, um, the vendor is really just providing the, the data coming off the, the sensor. They use us strictly for the front end. So the, the vendor installed everything. And yeah. we, the, the reason, the main reason why we're doing this is the vendor's solution, uh, you know, it uses wireless modems out in the field to communicate back. They actually have their own little server in each box, but they were only allowing, um, one person to connect at a time uh, because of bandwidth issues and other stuff. And, well, th we have hundreds of people who want to see this at a time sometimes. So they send the data to us. We're the one person, and we have tons of bandwidth and other resources. And um, it just I can tell you that all the vendors are good at the hardware, the sensor side. Mm -hmm. but the software side, they're all very poor. That's not where their money is, right? Their money is on maintaining, operating the sensors. And speaking of money, this is a real low budget project. This is no, this is no, no rocket science here. You know, I, I think, I think it was in the low tens of thousands of dollars to put it together. 
For the software, is that something that uh, <coughs> Maryland may be willing to share with other states? We would definitely entertain taking data from other states and just reusing the software. Um, that's kind of what we do. We're like a data warehousing place. So absolutely. It's the motor motor carrier safety division of. Well, they have plan for you to also integrate their crew cast data. You know, they had this res resp responders and. They're not doing that right now. I know Maryland. I, I can't tell you why, but Maryland for some reason is not happy with free pass right now. Um, I think they they feel as if more people are getting by than ought to be. Yeah. Uh, but I I don't know much about that. And I don't think there's any plans to integrate right now. That's I mean, a private. A it does make a lot of sense, but, but PrePass is a private company. I think, if I remember correctly, PrePass might not allow that as part of their agreements, at least in North Carolina. So North Carolina went with NorPass for that reason. Right. Um, so it, I mean, just the, the solution, you know, the pre-clearance. Yeah, the the idea, right. yeah. That makes sense. Right. Especially once we get the license plate recognition. So we can't actually tell who's out there right now. You have to look at a picture. Yeah. But once the once the LPR is in place, then there's more capacity to do that sort of thing. Yeah, that's gonna be neat. We're gonna do all kinds of different visualizations once we've got IDs on people. So the vendor will install the cardinal will install the license plate or are you guys are no, we don't. We don't install any hardware out in the field, and I don't know if Cardinal's the one that's doing it or if it's a third party. I, I'm not sure. We'd have to check with the, with the, our our main point of contact. 